Hi everybody, hope everybody's doing well. I'm super excited to be here uh, to show you how to uh, obviously make some sugar flowers. And because it's close to Valentine Day, I decided to show how to make red roses and baby's breath or gypsophilia according to some countries. Now, of course, roses can be made in many, many colors and many different uh, ways of making roses. I'm going to show you using my Flower Pro method today. Um, but of course, you could change the color out. But red is a color that a lot of students have questions about. You know, how do you achieve that lovely, like dark blood red color, especially for like Valentine's Day or if a bride wants obviously darker red roses in the autumn time or for a wedding. So I'm going to show you how to sort of achieve those beautiful sort of dark red colors. These, of course, could be made in more of a traditional bright red, but I'm going to show you this more like a blood red color. Now, um, in the uh, uh, live, I'm going to be showing you how to do roses. You can see here, uh, we have here a spray of uh, red gum paste roses. So here I actually have a bud. I have a mid-size rose, which is a medium size, and then I have a fully blown. And I've accented that with baby's breath or gypsophilia. And also I've used my flower pro fern and rose leaves. Now in this live, I'm going to show you the basis of making the rose, the calyx, also how to make the leaves, and then the baby's breath to make more of a single stem rose. So let's get started. So when we are making roses, um, so first of all, I'm going to show you um, how to make a single stem rose. So here you can see there is a vase where I've got um, obviously three roses. So of course, you know, if you were doing this for um, a cake, most of the time you're gonna do more of like a wired spray that I've just shown you. But I'm going to show you how to make a single stem rose. And of course, those of you that work in air drying clay or cold porcelain, you of course could do this as a permanent uh, gift for somebody as a beautiful rose wrapped in cellophane instead of buying a fresh rose, which of course is gonna die. This would last forever. Now, when we are making red roses, we're going to, first of all, we're going to make this lovely blood red color. Now, in my uh, Flower Pro videos, I do uh, talk about this in my book number one, in Flower Pro book number one. And if you go to nicholaslodge.com, so go to my website, you're going to click on recipes and templates. So first of all there, there's going to be a download for the red roses. So I'm gonna have like all the information of the colors and the wires and all of that information there, uh, especially also the dust I'm going to use. And then also there, there is a, a size guide, a downloadable size guide. Because when we make, uh, for example, the rose cone, I'm going to measure the using the size guide. Um, so and a couple of the other things, the baby's breath as well. So this is a plastic size guide, which is available through katiesuedesigns.com along with all the Flower Pro things I'm showing you. Um, so this is a new plastic size guide. In the books, when you buy the books, you also get included a paper or cardboard size guide in the back. So you just cut around that with a pair of scissors. It's already pre-punched, okay? And then uh, we also have a download um, on the website and you just download that onto cardstock and then you just can cut round the, uh, just use like a pair of pine, fine scissors or you could use like an X-Acto nice a, a scalpel and cut around the holes um, to create your own size guide, okay? Um, so, so that information is on the website. And uh, so, but uh, when I make red roses, I'm going to make this blood red color and uh, today I'm going to actually use Renshaw paste. Now I generally use two, or actually normally use three different types of paste. I use my homemade Tylose paste, uh, which is made with Tylose or CMC. And that paste you can find the recipe on the downloads as well. There is an actual download. And then on my YouTube channel, which on the download you're gonna make, uh, take from uh, obviously all the instructions, I'll have links there to my YouTube channel, my Flower Pro YouTubes, and uh, all of that. But on my YouTube channel, I also have a YouTube of how to make homemade, uh, what I call scratch gum paste, all right, or flower paste as known in some other countries. Um, and then I also use Renshaw paste, and then I also use the Sugar In paste. So uh, Sugar In paste is an Indian company, so Sugar In UK, and then we have Sugar In North America. Um, and so, it, so Sugar In is an Indian company, and this is a starch-based paste. Um, so it stays flexible, it's sort of a little bit more flexible. And uh, this is really good for when you're making flowers like Gerber daisies, daisies, any flowers that are very like sort of spiky like dahlias and flowers like that, because this is not, it doesn't get as brittle when it dries. Now the Renshaw uh, paste, so the Renshaw flower and modeling paste, so this is the, um, obviously packs that they have in Europe. So um, this comes, of course, in white in different colors. Um, and today I'm gonna be using the white a little later, but I'm gonna use the red. Um, and the red is going to give you this, uh, it's gonna have just a bright red color, 
All right, so this would be, of course, good for flowers like poinsettias and flowers like that. When I'm using Flower Pro, all right, so when I'm using Flower Pro and when I'm using basically any of my, uh, you know, a traditional method of making flowers, the Renshaw paste, this does dry very quickly. So when you're using this, for example, for making rose cones, flower centers like daisy centers, calories, I use it just straight from the pack. But when I'm doing a flower like a rose or I'm rolling the paste out a lot thinner, or if, for example, I want a little bit more working time with the paste, uh, generally what I do is I use a formula of 85 grams of this, and to this I add 15 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant, all right? And uh, so what the 15 grams to the 85 grams of the flower modeling paste or gum paste does, it slows down the drying process, but also what it does, it gives your paste um, a little bit, it makes it a little softer, but it really, as I said, mostly is done to stop it drying too quickly, all right? So what I have here, now because we're adding 15 grams of, um, 15 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant, when I make my red roses, what I do is I use 85 grams of the red, and in the UK and Europe, this is called carnation red flower modeling paste, so that's 85 grams. I have 10 grams of the purple sugar paste or rolled fondant, and five grams of chocolate brown sugar paste or rolled fondant. So by taking those together, now the, because the Renshaw paste is quite dense, what I would suggest do is just pop this in a plastic bag, just microwave this for about 10 seconds, and then just integrate the purple and brown into this. And what you will end up with is 100 grams of this fabulous color. And of course, this is also nice to use for berries and other things like that. Um, so this will give you 100 grams of the paste, all right? And that's what we're going to be using to make the roses. Now, the first thing you will need to do when we make the rose is we're going to start off by making the rose cone. Now, when we make the rose cone, um, now, if you're going to do these in paste, all right, you'll need to, of course, make these a few hours in advance. I use a food dehydrator for most of my classes and all of my prep and things for, uh, as I said, videos like this. So I would just pop this in the food dehydrator for a couple of hours on 115 or 45 degrees centigrade. Um, and that really is a great, a food dehydrator is a wonderful investment. Now, when we are making the rose cone, this is a standard uh, 14 inch um, uh, 36 centimeter wire. Okay, so when you buy a pack of paper covered wire, uh, this is the length of it. So like, for example, you, the roses I just showed you at the beginning of this presentation, those were made by using half length wires. So you just cut the wires in half, okay, like this. So you could just cut the wire in half. So this will give you, of course, enough for two roses. But if you're making like a long stem rose, of course, you could make it this full uh, 14 inch length, all right, uh, 36 centimeter length, or you can make this to whatever length you want. And if you're not sure about, if you're doing more of a tall arrangement or making these for a vase, for example, um, of course, you can leave them full length and just cut them down to the desired size at the end, okay? So, anyway, so when we make the, the rose, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some half width floral tape so just get in my floral tape here. Now floral tape you always wanna keep into a zip top type of bag because it will stop it drying out, okay? Um, I use a, a cutter. Um, this is my Nicholas Lodge cutter that cuts the tape in half. And then this side will cut it into quarters. And what you do there is you're just gonna place that into the cutter and just rotate this around. There are several different companies that have cutters like this. Of course, when you first start, you could also just take a pair of scissors, okay? And then what we do there is you're just going to pull off your tape so you can just take your tape off of there. There is also um, on the, when you do the download, there will be a link there for, um, also for, uh, we have a uh, Valentine's sale going on through Valentine's Day where you get 10% off any of your purchases, okay? And uh, as I said, you're going to cut the tape into half. Now floral tape, when you're not using it, always keep it into zip top bag. We're going to take the, here, I'm going to take my floral tape and I'm going to stretch my tape a little bit like this. Now, first of all, I'm going to take, I'm right handed, so in my left hand, I'm going to take the end of the tape and I'm going to go around the end of the wire just to get started. And I'm going to go around 10 times. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Taking a pair of pliers, I'm then going to fold over the end of this. I'm going to make a hook. I'm actually going to make this hook on the end. And then I'm going to go around 20 times on the end of this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And when you're doing this, you want to keep tension. I think of like knitting or crochet and you keep tension on your wool. 
so 17, 18, 19, 20. And this is going to, then you're going to bring your wire down, your floral tape down, usually about two thirds of the way down. Now, when we are making rose cones, so basically I'm following along with the instructions which are in book uh, number one of my Flower Pro book. But as I said, this is, uh, shows you the roses, the medium-sized roses here. But we're actually making the rose cones here. So on the videos and in the book, of course, this tells you for a large cone, a medium cone, or a small cone. Um, because this system is very, very easy in that I designed this uh, rose cone mold. So this has got a large, a medium, and a small cavity. And then that relates to the blossom cutters, large, medium, or small blossom cutter. It relates to the calyx mold, large, medium, and small rose. So it's very, very easy because it's always been very complicated. For a lot of times, students often say, I get very complicated because confused because you know I've got all these different blossom cutters and different, so which size you do, do you use for what? So this makes this simplifies it. So if you're making small roses, you use this, small blossom cutter and a small calyx mold, medium, 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 large, large, large. And I'm showing you the large size one. But anyway, so in the book here, uh, this talks about the floral tape buds, because when you do like medium roses, you'd use 10 times hook times 15, and for small, I use 10 times hook times uh, 10. And I'm also using an 18 gauge wire for the large roses, 20 for the medium, and 22 gauge for the small roses, okay? So anyway, so what we do now is going to take some paste. So this is some white uh, Renshaw paste, and this is just straight out of the pack, all right? So this paste is straight from the pack. Um, I started using these bags a lot. They're called Mylar bags, so they're made like you'd make Mylar balloons. But these work really good for storage of paste because it's very, very strong seal, so your paste won't dry out. It's also great for like modeling chocolate and all different types of things. Now when we, um, we're going to use a number 13 here, number 13, a uh, small size ball of paste. So that's going to be a number 13 that goes through the hole, all right? So you see how it just goes through the hole there, like that. So that's what we call a 13 small. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of vegetable fat or shortening, all right? So white fat, a little tiny bit of shortening on my finger. And here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix this through. Now this is just straight Renshaw white gum paste, all right? I don't model flour and model in paste. Because when you make rose cones, most of the time you're going to be wanting them to dry as quickly as possible. If you have time to let these dry, okay, meaning you can just dry them for a few days, you could actually even do these in just straight sugar paste or rolled fondant or 50-50 paste, half sugar paste and half flour paste. But uh, when I do them, generally I'm always using them, um, so I use the flour gum paste. I'm going to use here um, egg white. I have my egg white in a little pot here. Um, and uh, so this works really well. It has a little plunger in the top of it. And when I press my, put you my wire in, as you see later, but also when I'm putting my brush in, I can use the rim here. I'm just going to brush some egg white over the top. I'm going to keep my brush in a wet washcloth or flannel. This just stops it drying out. So what I'm going to do here, just going to insert the here into there. Just using a little bit of Corn flour, corn starch. This is in just a little uh, pouch. Just going to mold this around, just to secure my paste into into there like so. So you're just going to secure that around the bottom. Going to make this into a basic cone shape to hold your thumb and finger like this. And then what we're going to do here is going to rotate this in my cone mold. Now the cone mold is designed so you can make them in two halves, but I generally always make my rose cones. Um, by rotating this, so you see how you're just going to go around and around and around, and then your little bit of excess paste that comes off the bottom, you're just going to use a pair of scissors and just remove that like so. But what this means is that every time you make these, you'll get the perfect size piece of co cone. Now, when you dry these in your food dehydrator, you can hang them. Um, I'm also going to be showing you later on some convoluted foam, which is like crepe foam. You could also just lay them in the crepe foam and again pop that in your food dehydrator. Okay? Um, and uh, if I was putting this in a dehydrator, I probably would need to leave that for about two, about two hours in the food dehydrator to be able to move on, or in ambient room temperature, about six hours. Okay? But you can make these in advance and then just store them. Um, so anyway, so, so as I said, you know, we're going to make your roses or whatever length you want. I'm just going to make this a little bit shorter so that uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to maneuver it around. So you've got your rose cone, so that needs to be pre-made. Now, now we're going to move on to your paste. So we've got our paste, uh, obviously I discussed that at the beginning. 
So I'm going to take my paste. So this is my 100 grams of paste, all right? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna roll this into a log. And I'm gonna use my little Flower Pro Flexi Scraper. I'm just gonna cut this into quarters. So what that actually means is we have about 25 grams in each of these sections, okay? And that's gonna be enough for two paddles at a time. Uh, because when you're using, a, when we roll this out through the pasta machine, you don't wanna be working with too larger amounts of paste because your paste will get tough, but also what happens is um, you're going to have uh, you know, issues with it drying and trying to use it and whatever. So remember, this is the formula. So this has got the 15 grams of the uh, 10 grams of purple, 10, uh, five grams of brown sugar paste added to it. I'm going to take a little bit of vegetable shortening. Now the Renshaw paste and also the sugar in paste are both vegan, which means they don't contain egg whites, whereas my homemade paste does. But what I do when I'm working with uh, paste where I need it to be a little bit more elastic, because the Renshaw paste has a little bit of elasticity, but not quite as much as like my homemade paste. So what I do here is I use a pipette. All right, this is a little small pipette you'd use to uh, put in cupcakes with alcohol in. So just gonna suck up some egg white in the little pipette here, all right? And what I'm gonna do here is you can just gonna put in just a little bit of egg white like that. And then I use just a toothpick, a cocktail stick. I put in the end of that. And then you can, when you finish with that, you can just keep it in the fridge, all right? Wash it out. But see, what you do is the other alternative is you can also just dip your brush a couple of times into egg white and add a little bit of egg white like that. Now you could do this in the whole batch, all right? But um, I, because I've already prepped some of my petals, I only need a little bit of this with, uh, because if I was making, let's say, uh, just basic flowers, I wouldn't necessarily put the egg white into it. Now, of course, this no longer becomes, remains vegan, but at the end of the day, when you're working with sugar flowers, you don't usually encourage the bride and groom to sit down after the wedding at Starbucks and chomp their way through the roses from the wedding cake the night before, because of course they contain wires, um, and so it's not really something I advise people to eat. But of course you can use gum paste for decorations on cookies and cupcakes. So I've conditioned, this is what I refer to as conditioning the gum paste. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just roll this out. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my corn flour, corn starch. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pin the paste out. And this is gonna be my cutter I'm gonna use, all right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna pin this out into a square. So remember, this is 25 grams. So just gonna pin this out into a square. Now, if you get any little air bubbles, these are, this is an acupuncture needle, all right? Um, so with an acupuncture needle, you're just gonna go in with your acupuncture needle. And this is really good if you get little air bubbles or like lint or something in your paste. And then with the acupuncture needles, like I'm keeping them, this is my little um, Flower Pro I use for my companion tool. I generally keep them in this little tube here. Um, alternatively, before I had that manufactured, um, my students, we just usually kept them on a magnet because then they make sure you're not gonna get lost on the table. And of course, this is not something you want to sit on or accidentally stab yourself with. So just keep it on a magnet. So, so you're just gonna roll this out because I'm gonna use my pasta machine all right, the pasta machine, what the pasta machine does is going to extend the, the length of the paste. It doesn't do anything to the width. So you always need to make sure when you roll this out. Now this is an 11 centimeter or 110 millimeter. So 110 millimeter cutter. This is the largest size of the three. There's also a 90 uh, millimeter and there's also a 70 millimeter. These come in a set. Now we're gonna use the pasta machine. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this out the way just so I can bring the pasta machine into camera so you can sort of see this. So just gonna come into overhead camera here. All right, so my pasta machine, this is my KitchenAid pasta machine. So I'm going to go through, first of all, a number three. Now it's important, so you usually put it on about speed number four. I'm just gonna rub a little bit of the corn flour, corn starch over the surface of this. Okay, and so what we're then gonna do is I'm gonna go first of all through number three. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna feed it through my pasta machine. All right, and then I'm gonna go to number six. Now, if you were using a larger amount of paste, let's say 50 grams of paste, all right, and you had a larger amount of paste, you go through number two, number one, then number two, then four, then six, you know. So if you, the more paste you're using, the, then so here I'm gonna go through on number six. All right. I'm just gonna move this out the way. And then I'm gonna take my cutter. So with my cutter here, I'm gonna take my cutter, I'm gonna place the cutter onto the top, gonna press down, 
I'm going to go around in a circular movement. I'm going to pop this out. Okay. And this will enable you to cut out two petals at a time. I'm going to go down. Now this is a slightly textured surface. So what that does, you get this nice, um, obviously, cut. You don't want to use like a stainless steel surface or a granite surface in your kitchen because what will happen, the paste will just stick to it. I'm going to pop my excess paste back in the bag. I'm going to now take my multi-flap. Now this is a plastic flap that is designed uh, to put your paste in and it's got two pieces of plastic, all right, which means you could put six there and then you could do another six here. So you can actually put like 12 of the biggest size blossoms in here at a time. So of course you could roll out 50 grams or 100 grams, but if you were using all 100 grams, what you would need to do is you need to make sure you start off number one, then two, then four, then six, all right? Um, when I'm doing uh, in classes, like when my students are working with the paste and they're cutting out a lot of components, we generally just put the wet washcloth or flannel on the top of there. What that does, it keeps it cool and moist uh, while you uh, work on the petals. Now here we're going to take my Flower Pro Vena. So this is my ultimate petal vena. It's a double-sided vena. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my flap and the flaps are available through Sugar in UK. Um, so Angela Henderson carries these. Um, and so it's really good to store your paste in. So anyway, so you're going to use the bottom part of the flap. Now, when you, view, when you add the egg white to the paste, if it feels like it might be a little sticky, all right, you can, you can do this also um, if your gum homemade paste is a little sticky. Just take a little tiny bit of vegetable fat or shortening on your fingers and just a little tiny, tiny amount, just rub that onto the petal. And then what you're going to do here, you're going to take this and you're going to pop this onto the top, okay? Then I'm going to take the corresponding, this is the main part of the mat, my corresponding part of the mat going to go on top of this. I'm using my uh, Flower Pro press. This goes on the top, like so. I'm just going to press on the top here. This distributes the weight. Now the acrylic, uh, the silicone here, the top part of the vein, will stay stuck to that. So you've got that as for, and you're going to get your nice veining onto your petals. All right. So you're going to take your petals off, so you have this nice veining onto your petals. Now when we um, we're going to now soften the petals. Now there's several ways to do this, or I'm going to show you a couple of different options. So the first technique is a traditional method of using a balling tool, and we're going to soften just about the top, about one inch, about two and a half centimeters. So what I'm going to do here now, this will end up being the back of the petal. The vena, this particular silicone vena is the same both sides, so it doesn't matter which side you use here. But we're just going to go around here onto the, so we're just going to be half on the paste and half on the pad, but just about two, two and a half centimeters about the top one inch, all right? Now, what we then do is you're going to turn this over and we're going to place this onto the mat like this. All right, so it's going to sit onto the mat like so. And then we're going to take your rose cone. So this is my dry rose cone. And then with my egg white brush here, I'm going to brush egg white all over the cone. Now, I, I have always used egg white, is what I prefer for flower making, uh, but some people use edible glue, so it's whatever you use. Um, but I said we're going to use your egg white. And then what we do here is going to just take the wire, going to go through that middle part here, going to bring this up. So this. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can hold your, like almost holding an ice cream cone like that, which is the way I normally hold it, all right? So you see, so from the side there, you can see I've got that hold like that. Um, or you can also hold it with your fingers, between your fingers like that to support it, all right? So anyway, so it's whatever you get used to. Now, we're going to follow the sequence. So layer number one will be petal number one. So what we're going to do here, the one that's got the number one tab, we bring this up from behind. You're going to bring this up around the cone. And then what we're going to do here, you're going to just tuck in the right-hand side. And then you're going to bring the left hand side around and over the top. So that's our first petal. All right, so then next we're going to take petal number three and five. So we're going to brush egg white. All right, about halfway up petal number three and halfway up petal number five. All right, and just make sure, as I said, if they move in place. But so now we're going to do petal number three. So this is the one with the number three tab. And I found my companion tool, which is now commonly known as the Nick Stick. A lot of, uh, as I said, this is really useful for this. And so you see how you're using your Nick Stick and you're just going to come up with the number five one. Now those are going to form like a yin and a yang. 
which means what you want to do is they're going to form like this. You see how they will sort of uh, go into each other like that. Now sometimes your uh, center part might move a little bit, so just, just open that out. And then these are just going to be attached, so this is going to be your number one and your number three. Their next pedals are going to be number two and number four. All right, so the t number two and number four. So that's going to come up here. And then this is going to be your number four is going to come up here. And then those are going to just t slightly tuck into each other. So again, you'll have this little overlap. And if you need to use a little bit of egg white there, just but not too much, all right? So that is um, really almost like a rosebud, okay? So this could be left like this. Let's mold this around the bottom. And we're just going to pop that into your styrofoam block. And uh, so then that's the first layer. Now, if you were making, say, like three roses I showed in the spray at the beginning, what you would do there is you would, uh, of course, make the first layer on each one, and then you go on to the second layer and the third layer. So now we're going to move on to our, this will be our, what we call mid-size. Now, if you watch the video, there's also a tight bud, which I'm not showing you today um, because I'm just making a single rose, but you can watch the video on do you sh showing you how to make tight buds. So you're just going to go over the top of this. So again, we're just going to just press this on the top. But this is really a foolproof method of making roses. Now, these are like really, as I said, the type of rose I would make when I do wedding cakes. It's just a very good commercial uh, rose. Now, so that's one option. Now, the second option you can use is um, I use my uh, Nick stick, my companion tool, a lot. And what you can actually do is roll this. If you're familiar with like Garrett Frill technique, where you're going to just, so you bring this towards the edge of the pad, okay? And you see from the side there, you're using your stick at an angle like this, okay? Now, you can do this um, on the pad. You can also do this, and especially when I do smaller roses, in my class, I generally use the medium-sized rose. You can also do this on this little silicone mat as well. So th this works really well. And you can also do this on actually on the back of the vena. So you can actually take this, and you can pop this onto the vena like this. So you just you're actually using the back part of the vena, and you can actually roll on the vena like that. But you see, this is a way to soften. Now, the medium size one, you're softening just the top one third, all right? So you're just softening like the, if you think of the pedal, this is like the exposed part of the pedal. So this is about the middle third. So we're about, about one and a half inches, about four centimeters, okay? Now remember, when you just soften, you turn it over because you're softened. When you soften, you're going to lose the vein in slightly, and you're now going to build this onto the top here like so. Now we're going to take your rose, and then with my rose here, and just put a little bit of egg white around the bottom there, like so. Okay, and then I'm going to take your rose, and then we want the next layer is going to be petal number one and three. Now petal number one and three, you can see an overhead camera. Number one and three is sitting like this. So this is going to be your seam here. All right. So that is the seam of two and four from the previous layer. So you can see, so pedal number one will be there and number three will be there. So here again, you're gonna go about halfway up with your egg white on pedal number one and number three. Again, we're just gonna take your companion tool, gonna bring this up, gonna mold this around, gonna bring this up, mold this around here like so, okay? Then we're going to, from now on, we only do the egg white a third of the way up. We brush the egg white about a third of the way up on here and on here. Okay. And then you're going to turn this upside down. And then what we're going to do here, you're going to attach. So this is the pedal number two, which is going to be the single pedal. And you see these two pedals here, you want to make sure as you're looking at it, all right? So if you look in camera, like my eye, the right hand side of each pedal. So the right hand side, these two pedal here, you want to make sure that right hand side of the pedal is over the top. All right, so you create this spiral. So you can see here the right hand side, the right hand side, the right hand side. Okay, mold this around the bottom where the egg white is. You hold your thumb and finger in it here and you're going to pinch this over the top. So hold it like an ice cream cone. And now we're going to pinch our pedals back. So you create almost like a sort of a triangle of petals, all right? So you can see how that's going to give you the first part of that. 
Now this is going to go on to a drying rack. So this is a large drying rack, which I use. And so what we do here is you're just going to just hang this on the drying rack because this will then obviously stop the pedals and you see the drying rack is going to go like this and then the roses will just hang upside down. Now of course the other advantage is when you're doing this, when you're making uh, three, you're making um, like three roses or more, what happens is each layer has a little bit of time to dry, okay? So then what you would do is you repeat the process. So then you take another quarter of your paste and uh, that was, so in fact this large rose takes will actually use in at the end about 30 grams of paste, all right? So just over an ounce. Now I've already got these ones prepped as far as like, so that you then repeat the process, cut out two more, all right? You're going to vein them. And then these, the last two layers there, what we're gonna do there is you're gonna just soften around the whole of the back here. So I'm just gonna re, I've already have softened these, but they've just been in a plastic bag, so they've got a little bit squash. So remember, this will be your back of your pedal. So then again, we're going to, now here I'm just gonna use this really as a support, and you can also just flip that over as well. Now on these ones, all right, these last two layers of pedals, what you do here is you're gonna brush your egg white about a third of the way down, and I'm gonna do this a little bit like, almost like a starfish, okay? So you can see I'm just gonna brush this down here, like this. Okay, so you see how you've got your, your egg white is like almost like a starfish shape. Then I'll take my rose. But the advantage of having like doing three of them is each layer has a little bit of time to dry. So you have to, if you're making just one rose, just be careful when you're flipping this over because, or you can leave it just to dry for a few minutes. Now what we do here is you're just gonna line up one of the petals, it doesn't matter which one, in a gap, because you've got a gap here, a gap here, a gap here. So you just line up a petal in a gap you flip it upside down, okay? And then again, you see how you want to just create that spiral, all right? So you can see overhead in camera, but you can see the right-hand side of each of the pedals is sticking up, all right? Then you can just sort of press that down where the egg white is. You're gonna hold your thumb and finger, gonna turn this over, and we're gonna now tweak your pedals like this All right, so that's gonna give you your, your pedals. Now, um, this is what we call full size, all right? If you wanted to continue, which is actually what I have done, is with another layer, what you would then do is you'd repeat the process again, all right, just because of time, getting through as much as possible in my little, in my slot. So what you do is exactly the same way, soften all the way around the exposed part of the pedal. And then of course, those pedals, when you position them up, you have the pedal would go in a gap. So the thing is, is where the gap is there, so you just would put like a pedal here or here, it doesn't matter, flip it upside down and put those on. Now when you've got, if you're gonna uh, leave it at this layer or you're gonna take it through to what we call fully blown, what we then do is you're gonna take a uh, pair of scissors and take some pieces of foam. So you only put foam under the last five pedals, all right? And so what I've done is cut some pieces of foam. I'm gonna use some beading tweezers here, which are silicone tip tweezers and I'm just gonna pop some foam underneath this pedal here. Or if you want, uh, if you want like a more of a more open rose, all right, what you can actually do is you then let it dry for a, probably about 30 minutes or so, and again, you can put it in your food dehydrator, uh, let it dry upside down, then you could put another layer on top of that if you wanted to, all right? But that's sort of how you would uh, do your rose. And then if you were doing the so this is a fully blown rose. You see that's actually got four layers of petals. That's got a total of 20 petals, okay? And you let that dry. Now once this is dry, we're going to take then the foam out of here. All right, so you're gonna take your foam out of your rose there like so. All right, and that would be ready for the next step. Now you're going to, to make a specimen rose or a single stem rose, we're going to take two extra wires. So I'm gonna take two, in this case, uh, 18 gauge wires. Because if you think of a rose in real life, it has quite a thick woody stem. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to just take the floral tape and we're going to tape down, you do this. So having a total of three wires will actually give you, um, will give you a round stem. All right, so it's gonna just gonna take down here like so to make the stem look more natural. 
I'm just going to bring in my here now because I can put this into weight. And you can see here we've got the we've also got the uh, pieces there. Now, also when we were talking about rose cones, there are other options you can also use. Let me just discuss now. Like if you are in a time restraint, you can buy. Um, styrene uh, cones, all right, these are made from styrene, which is like uh, smooth styrofoam. And so you just would make a hole in there and hot glue a 20 gauge wire, hooked wire into there. These come in different sizes. This is a 28 millimeter size, all right, which is the size of this cone. And then an alternative is also Crayola. This is a product you can buy in craft shops, but this is a Crayola called Model Magic. You can also make your cones from that and it, you'll be able to work on them in about an hour. Um, and this is also uh, gonna make the roses more lightweight as well. So if you're especially doing certain arrangements where weight might be a factor, that would be an alternative you could use uh, to the uh, cone, the paste cone. Now, once you've got your cone done, going to then going to move on to the next step, which is going to be to show you how to do the, the leaves and the calyx. Now, this is um, Renshaw green paste. All right, this is the Renshaw green, uh, like leaf green color gum paste. And again, I'm using 15 grams. Now, you could, of course, make this slightly lighter by 15 grams of using 15 grams of white sugar paste or rolled fondant. But here to make this slightly darker green, I've used 15 grams of green fondant, all right? So you can uh, also use like yellow fondant added to give more of a lime green color. So I, you know, in my Flower Pro books, I talk a lot about those different options you have there uh, for that. Now for the calyx, we're going to take the paste here. And I'm just uh, gonna show you one calyx. So you can, of course, do this on a larger scale. But I'm going to take here about a number 12, this is just going to be a regular size, number 12 uh, green, all right, so that goes about one third below and number 12 white. And again, just going to just condition these. This one I've already have some egg white in, and this is actually just the straight uh, Renshaw gum paste for this inside part. But you could also, if you wanted it to have a little extended life, you could use the combination I talked about, which is going to be to use the uh, use the uh, 15 grams of white sugar paste or fondant added to 85 grams of white paste. So we're just going to roll that out just a little bit. We'll just thin it out like a hamburger. Okay, and then I'm going to rub a little bit of vegetable fat shortening over, and I'm going to just put these two pieces together. Now this is how we laminate paste, and we use this on roses for petals where you want a different colored top to bottom of the petal. So you're just going to roll this out. All right, so you see how this is how you laminate your paste. This is going to go through the pasta machine on number four. I'm not going to bring this back into camera because you've already sort of seen that, but I'm just going to go through on number four here. See it in front camera. All right, and then I'm going to use a round uh, cookie or biscuit cutter, which is going to be about the size of my large size calyx. Right, you can actually get you can actually get two two of it out of this. You're just going to cut out these. All right, so you see how you've got laminated disc. But if you did this number six and you cut out your rose petals, then what you actually do is you would end up um, with obviously a two tone like copper on the front and cream on the back of your roses. Now this paste you have left once you finished your project that will just become light light green. All right, so when you want to do sort of pale green colors, you can just use that for light green. The Renshaw gum paste also freezes very well as well, so you can keep this in the freezer. Now, when we're using the Flower Pro shallow molds, we're going to take, I'm going to use a little bit of vegetable fat on my fingers here, and I'm just going to put just a little tiny bit with a brush. Or you can also use your finger, but generally a brush is the best way to do. Think of this a little bit like lining a tart shell with uh, pastry. So what we're going to do then is you're going to place that into there. I'm going to take my cosmetic sponge here. You can either use a cosmetic sponge or a cosmetic wedge. It's going to pop this into the, into here. All right, so what I've actually done is I've like lined this like you would with pastry. Taking a Dresden tool, I'm just going to just press that into here like so. And then again, we're going to now just take the little flexi scraper. And with my flexi scraper, I'm going to use a sawing action. 
you see what I'm actually doing is I'm sawing. And this is going to give me my calyx. So this is going to give me my last one there. And then what I do is I'm going to push this back into the mold. Because this is going to give you the feathering on the three parts of this. Plus also you're going to get this nice uh, look to your... Then we're just going to flex this out of the mold. And because of the vegetable fat in there, that's easy to, to do. It's going to just come out of the mold. There we go. All right. And I'm just going to pop this onto, this is a cosmetic sponge. And I'm just going to use my Dresden tool here. And just with my Dresden tool, I'm just going to just hollow that out just a little bit at the base. Okay. And then I'm going to take my egg white. Now, when we do a club, when we do a bud, we put the egg white all the way down here. I'm just going to put my egg white about two thirds of the way up. I'm rushing this a little bit, but, you know, just uh, to give you the idea. And then you take your rose here. You're going to bring this through. You're going to slide this up and then you just position this. This is going to go in the middle of the petal. I use my cosmetic sponge. This is a perfect way to get my calyx up. And then we're just going to just curl the petals back just a little tiny bit. All right. Because when you have open roses, now I will give you a little bit of advice. If you're going to be putting these into a spray, you know, because rose calyxes sometimes are going to be like, like this. All right. So, but the thing is, is it's very vulnerable then to get broken. Okay. So normally on my rose, I have just a little tiny bit there. And then this is a little bit of uh, green. Okay. So what we're going to do here, we're going to make the ovary. So when we fill this up, so again, we're going to just take the little bit of shortening into the cavity mold. So you see, what I've done is I've sort of just simplified the whole process. Now this, you can actually just push paste in there, all right, and just use your, because it's just a very basic shape. You're going to just pinch that off. So you're going to get this little, and it's going to give you like almost like a little acorn cup, okay? But also remember, you can watch the full video, all right? You can watch the video of like obviously how to make the, the leaves and uh, all of the different, um, you know, components. But I just want to just to concentrate really on the basis of the rows and then just going to finish up with uh, showing you the coloring to finish up with. Um, so you see how you've got now your little, um, it's going to give you a little um, ovary, which is going to be a little hip at the bottom there. So you make a hole in there and it's going to go through the, middle of this, and you slide this up. So you have the little uh, cup on here. And then with a little bit of egg white, you're going to put a little bit of egg white onto the top part of this. All right, and then you're going to slide this up to the bottom. So you see how it's going to create your hip. And then all I then do is using my companion tool, my Nick stick, I'm going to just going to fuse those two together. So you see I'm just molding that around the bottom like so to give me my ovary, okay? And that is how you would um, do the sort of the basics of the, the rows, all right? Now, um, what we're gonna do now is gonna move on to uh, the coloring. Now, there's also um, in the rose cone mold, all right, in the rose cone mold, and remember there are, I have nearly 50 YouTube videos on that, but in the rose cone mold, there is also, um, this is the thorn mold. So these would make the thorn. So you just push the green gum paste, just like I showed you on the ovary, and then cut off with your scraper. And then you can put these on straight away, or you can apply these a little later on. And so that actually makes the thorns of your rose, because when you're making like a single stem rose, that's a really nice feature to, uh, to use. Now, we're going to, going to show you the coloring on the rose. Now, of course, normally, just because this is a live, you would you know, clear all your equipment out of the way and then be moving on to your next step. So I'm just bringing in my colors here. Okay, so when we make the roses, now this is a color called Ruby, all right? Um, and this is my Nicholas Lodge brand, but these are uh, matched very closely to like Sugar Flare colors, all right? So those of you in the UK, so Sugar Flare have a Ruby and the Aubergine eggplant color. So this is the Ruby color. So with Ruby, 
what I'm going to do here, and I've already done some of most of this anyway, all right? So with the ruby dust, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the eye of the rose. So I'm going to just pounce. I'm using a round brush here. I'm just going to pounce into the middle here. Okay. And that's with a round brush. And then with a flat brush, with a flat brush, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to brush from the source away from the source. So what I'm doing is I'm brushing from the outside of the petals to the inside. All right, so you brush all, and you're also going to do that. I've already done this on all but one of the petals. There we go. So then you're going to brush this. So you see how you can see this sort of is a darker color, like a ruby color. Right, so that's going to be in the ruby. Now then we're going to take some aubergine. Our aubergine is like a, in Europe you call it eggplant. Uh, here in the U.S. and some countries call it aubergine. So it's like an eggplant color. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pounce into that eye with my round brush. And this is going to intensify the eye of your rose. So you're going to get this really beautiful color into the middle. Now there's varieties, there's one called like chocolate box rose where you actually take chocolate dust there. You see how I'm just going to brush that into the middle. Now then I'm going to put a little bit of green onto here. So I'm going to use, so this color is moss green. So with some moss green, I'm going to brush a little bit of this onto the So you're going to do a little stripe of moss green going down the middle of the calyx around here. And then I've attached these. Um, these are the thorns which I've attached. You can either soften them with a little bit of egg white or you can soften them with a little bit of the uh, super bond, which I show on the video. So remember, you can watch the full videos. This is really just a little live just giving you some ideas for Valentine's Day. So we're going to use the moss green onto there. And I'm also going to take a little touch of ruby. So I'm going to put just a little bit of ruby onto the tip of the thorn. Okay. And then I'm going to take, this is the green, the moss green, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. Now, what when you add white dust in powder, which is basically titanium dioxide, what that does, it makes it so it is opaque, not translucent. Because if I just put moss green on the base of the petals, when I steam them, it's not going to be noticeable. So you're going to put that that sort of, so it looks like an opaque, so it's going to give you this green on the bottom. So when you're working on, say, like red tulips and flowers like that, that would give you the, um, the uh, technique of the, the coloring. And uh, so when you add white powder to the, to the dust, what that's going to do is going to make it opaque. So that means that you, let me get this out of the way. And then I'm going to just bring in my clothes steamer. Just got about two minutes and... Uh, so I've got my clothes steamer here. So it's just going to heat up. I heated this up earlier. So what we're going to now do is going to steam the rose, and it's going to give you the beautiful, um, as I said, sort of colors to this. And it's really going to intensify the color onto the rose. Now I've already pre-made some rose leaves, and a lot of you have obviously made rose leaves before, so I've just pre-made these, and I've used a moss green, a little bit of forest green, and a little bit of red accent. This is done with my Flower Pro um, leaf cutters, all right, and then my Flower Pro. So you can watch the video on making rose leaves uh, using these two products here. And then the baby's breath, I've got some baby's breath made here, which that is made in my filler flower, okay? So this is made in my filler flower mold in this little cavity here. And again, you can watch the full video on that. But here we're gonna just steam the rose. So I'm just gonna just steam the rose and the thorns like that. Pop this out of the way. So here, now of course it's going to look shiny when you first do this and uh, then you can tape your leaves onto there so we can just tape the rose leaves. So I'm just going to bring my rose leaves into there. So if you were just doing a single stem rose, I have here three of the um, extra large leaves. I'll pop that out of the way. Three of the extra large leaves here. But you know, so many times when you see roses, a lot of times when you buy a single rose, you get the baby's breath or gypsophilia with that as well. So then you can just take the baby's breath here. And the baby's breath is really easy to make. It's just, you know, you just put little balls of paste in here, like so. And it's going to bring that up from behind. So I'm just going to add some of the baby's breath into here. And I'm just going to just sort of integrate that into the, in with the rose there. You know, if you wanted to. But just the, I use the baby's breath a lot into a spray. And of course, you could just uh, wire that together. And, uh, 
but just just to show you as i said so you know this is all created with flower pro and you can see here this has also got my ferns in there but you know once the roses dry they're going to have that but you see a sort of beautiful color combination all right and with the baby's breath and with the ferns and the rose leaves really it's got cool on there really really nice combination of colors um, and uh, we also do have a starter kit. So those of you that don't have any Flower Pro, there is a basic starter kit, which has book one, which is the book I showed earlier. And it also has the, um, like the veiners, the cone mold, the rose leaves, the fern, and the filler flower mold. So that's a really good way to get started with Flower Pro. And, um, and uh, you know, so that just gives you some ideas on uh, how to do roses. So happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And I hope everybody's enjoyed this live. Until next time, sweet wishes. It's been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Bye.